Oh my goodness, it's been way too long. I've been slacking. I've been naughty. I've been slacking on these live streams, haven't I? But I'm back in the echoey <laughs> new house, but I'm back. Hopefully the audio is still crystal clear. And today I'm pumped. I'm excited to share with you three ways that you can lose up to 10 pounds in the next eight weeks. This is the time of year when people hide away. They want the comfort food. They want to feel warm, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, at least. It's not the same for all of my clients, my friends down under in New Zealand, et cetera, South America. But most of us watching this right now, Christmas, we've got the holidays coming up, right? This is when people want to you know, nestle up on the on the settee, on the sofa, right, and just eat utter trash and watch Netflix. And that's no way to live. That's no good for your health and well-being, isn't it? Um, so let's butt that trend. Let's go counterculture. And let's make sure that at this time of year, when everyone else is giving up and memeing themselves into winter wake, oh, my Christmas layers, that you are just crushing it. You're watching that scale go down. You're improving your relationship with food, getting fitter each week. And then you get a massive head start on the new year, right? All those January heads that are like, this is it, right? This is the year. New year, new me. All of those heads, right? All of those folks, you'll be one up. You'll be two up. You'll be 10 pounds down by the time they're even signing up for their first gym membership. So that's what I want to do for you today. Share three of the integral steps that are going to be crucial to that journey. And I just want to validate this stuff here. Like I probably don't sing um, my, my praises of my clients enough here. I just want to validate there are clients in my program right now who are crushing this, who are losing actually more than 10 pounds in eight weeks. So this is not just willy nilly stuff that I've come out with from nowhere. These are authentic, original time to, and when I say authentic and original, that's not to say I'm a pioneer on weight loss or plant-based eating or anything like that. I'm very well aware I'm standing on the shoulders of giants, the people that spearheaded this movement. But these are my authentic lessons and insights after helping now nearly 400 vegans and plant-based dieters towards their ideal healthy body weight. So this isn't some willy-nilly nonsense that I haven't thought about. This is stuff that is time-tested. This is the stuff that's breaking my clients through right now. Whether it's, you're going to lose my head here, whether it's Pat, who at 71 years old, it's actually slightly more comfortable this side, <laughs> 71 years old, absolutely smashed it and lost um, 17 pounds in her 12 weeks with me. Whether it is uh, they wish to remain unnamed, let's say client X, client X lost 16.9, let's call it 17, for goodness sake, let's call it 17 pounds again in 12 weeks with me. Uh, this is Vicky, smashed it, okay? In all fairness, Vicky worked 24 weeks with me, but that's a good, what is that, 20-something over 20 pounds there. Vicky smashed it, looking different. She's not done yet. This is just the start for her, but amazing. Ryan, who worked with me a couple of years back, not me, Ryan, he lost 31 pounds. 31 pounds in 12 weeks with me without counting a single calorie, as I say on the screen there, without having to worry about, you know, uh, or restricting carbohydrates or eating an absurd amount of protein every day. This is what my, my this is what my clients, the results they're getting on Slim and Sustain. So I'm giving you three of their crucial lessons today. And step number one here, if you want to lose up to, and it maybe even just beyond 10 pounds in the next eight weeks, Here's what the, uh, there's a lot of contentious stuff out there, right? There's a, it's confusing. People don't know where to start. It's very overwhelming. When you start looking at weight loss, even when you start looking at plant-based weight loss, this doctor has this opinion, this YouTuber has this opinion. What about the nuts? Do I need to do the 50-50 plate, the fat content, X, Y, Z? How high with the protein, right? There's a lot of different influences, even just under the plant-based umbrella. Then you extrapolate that out to the wider health community. It's a nightmare. But here's the one thing, the vast, vast, vast majority of us teachers and us coaches and us doctors doctors in this community are agreeing on across the spectrum of diets. A consistent calorie deficit is how you lose weight. And that's the bottom line. And as I like to say, there's many ways to peel an orange. There's many ways to lose weight. Bottom line, you want to be in a calorie deficit. That's what's going to move the needle. So whether it's keto, whether it's the carnivore diet, I know, don't get me started. Whether it's flexible dieting, whether it's plant-based, whether it's some sub-diet under the plant-based umbrella, whether it's McDougal's Maximum Weight Loss or Nutritarian or the Ryan Adams Slim and Sustain Approach, the reason why they all produce results for the people that shout from the rooftops about them is because they're in a consistent calorie deficit. 
Oh, they might not last very long, and a year later they might rebound back up the scale. I know you'll be nodding as you watch this. I've been there, right? This is what most people do. But the reason why they work initially is because you're in a calorie deficit. It might be too much of a calorie deficit or not enough of a calorie deficit. That's a different question entirely. But it is, or maybe one day they're in one, another day they're not so much. So it's kind of evening out over the course of the week. That's why I stress consistently. So that's the one thing every health guru, quote unquote, argues uh, is that calories are going to be the bottom line for weight loss. That's not to say weight loss only comes down to calories and hormones, metabolic rate, inflammation in the body, gut bacteria aren't important. Uh, we haven't even talked about exercise and sleep and stress management, hydration and so on, rest recovery. All of these things are important. They are variables in the equation of weight loss, but calories seems to be the bottom line in most people's estimations in this community. Now, of course, everybody, right? Every Tom, Dick, and Harry argues that their approach is the best one, and all the others are inferior, and all the others are terrible. I do it. I fall into the trap of being like, well, that didn't work for me, so it's terrible. That didn't work for me, so it's terrible. And this is the one thing that magically broke me through. Every guru is going to argue, I should say guru, quote, unquote. I don't consider myself a guru by any means. Um, everyone argues that their approach is the magic pill, the one, the savior, the thing that saved them. I can simultaneously now acknowledge that even though a plant-based diet is the thing that changed my life most of all, there were still small, I'm stressing, small aspects of other diet approaches that I tried in the past that did have success built into them. And I did get things right at certain times. So it's not as though I stumbled across a plant-based diet and it all worked magically and everything else was terrible before that. Everything else was very difficult, admittedly, before that. But that's not to say I was doing everything wrong before and everything about those other diets was absolutely terrible. It's not quite that straightforward. Of course, I think a plant-based diet is superior. Otherwise, I wouldn't live that now for the last eight years myself and then have the audacity to talk about it and talk about it so positively online. So of course, I think plant-based diet is superior, but it's also not fair for me to go and bash everything I tried before and say that I learned no lessons from it and some of it wasn't beneficial. Does that make sense? So yeah, many ways to skin an orange. You have to ask you, you have to ask yourself, what's the best way to be in a calorie deficit? Now, personally, as I say, there's only one that's changed my life and that's eating lots of whole fiber rich plant foods, not being vegan. I am vegan, for the record, but I want to stress the reason why I've been able to get in the shape I have today, I'm so, so braggadocious, I know, but ultimately reach my ideal healthy body weight and most importantly, actually maintain that now for the last X many years, whatever it is, five years since I kind of lost the amount I wanted to. And it's very much on autopilot now. It's very natural habits just running themselves with zero sort of effort motivation required and conscious discipline, let's say. There is discipline, but conscious discipline. The, the reason why I've been able to do that is because of a whole food plant-based diet. It's not just about being vegan. Vegan, vegan tells me what you don't eat. That tells when somebody tells me that they're vegan, I immediately recall that they don't eat animal products. So there's no meat, there's no dairy, there's no eggs, there's no fish, there's no byproducts, honey, perhaps, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, right. But it doesn't tell me what they do eat. Because there's a, you know, you could be having the Oreos, you could be having the sodas, you could be still drinking lots of booze, lots of alcohol, you could be having those highly processed, almost junky mock meats, you know, the vegan Ben and Jerry, so on and so forth, right? So being vegan isn't enough. What's changed the game for me is eating lots of whole plant foods. Um, and that, in fact, is the easiest way I've discovered to actually stay consistently in that calorie deficit for a couple of reasons. Number one, because the fiber in most plant-based foods, I stress most, not all, but most plant-based foods, helps me stay fuller for longer. And that's an anecdotal experience I've had. It also measures up scientifically, but anecdotally, I can feel myself versus years ago staying fuller for much longer, even on a lesser amount of calories than years ago when I was eating animal, animal products and junk foods. It would take more calories to fill me up than it does now, um, even though the calories are less, because that fiber makes a heck of a difference when it comes to actually feeling satisfied and feeling a, a fullness and a bulk and a volume in your stomach to carry you over to the next meal. So that number one reason why this is the easiest method, the, the plant-based diet is the easiest method I found to be in a calorie deficit because of the fiber content. Number two, I've already kind of touched on this, but the caloric density of so many plant foods, not all of them, but so many plant foods is much lower than animal or many animal products, I should say, to be fair, and processed foods, much, much lower. So, you know, the likes of whole grains and beans and potatoes, so tubers as well, sweet potatoes, yams, et cetera, et cetera, butternut squash, um, the likes of, what am I missing? Fruits, veggies, did I say those? 
you know, these are nuts and seeds are an obvious exception, but these are incredibly low in their caloric density. What do I mean by caloric density? The calories per pound or per ounce per gram, whichever unit you measure in, is really, really low compared to lots of other foods, okay? Or under the, the foods that are contained, let's say, or, or promoted heavily within other diet nutrition methodologies. Make sense? So not all of them, like I say, nuts and seeds, and it depends what you eat. And of course, it depends how much, but isolating just caloric density, so calories per pound, calories per ounce, this diet is absolutely incredible. In fact, let me see here, have I got I wasn't even planning on doing this, but have I got a little infographic that displays this somewhat? Let's see here. I might disappear. No, that's healthy snacks. Can I show you guys? No, I can't. Darn it. I thought I had my calorie density infographic here just to illustrate, you know, the effectiveness in terms of calories of so many plant foods. But yeah, ultimately, I can then, as a result, I've been able to eat really big portions and still lose weight at the same time by maintaining that calorie deficit so much more easily than when there was lots of animal products in my diet. Okay, now, not everything, as I say, that you eat on a plant-based diet is going to be really, really low calorie. What about tahini and those rich dressings and sauces? And as I say, nuts and seeds and nut butters. And these are things I do include in my diet, albeit more sparingly, because I'm very conscious of the amount of calories they contain. So that's why it's made it so easy for me for years and years now, not that I'm in a calorie deficit now, but so easy to keep my calories low and very near maintenance for years and years, even after I've lost the weight, because I can still eat really big and I just don't feel all the deprivation and starvation that I, I felt years ago when I wanted to lose and then maintain a much lower body weight. And a plant-based diet has been an absolute blessing for that. And like I say, going back to the first point, you get all that fiber with it too. So low calories, lots of fiber, brilliant, absolutely fantastic. And this is without me even commenting on micronutrient profile of so many plant foods as well. That's another video for another day and how they can be beneficial in terms of their thermic effect and benefits to metabolic rate from having a, 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 a micronutrient rich and diverse diet as well. It's not just calories and fiber. That's what I'm talking about now, that they're, they're the obvious arguments, but it's not just calories and fiber. There's other things too. But anyway, let's move on. I can't stress enough. You need to be in a calorie deficit consistently to lose weight. Okay, so if you're wondering why your friend Helen lost loads of weight on a keto diet, even though you heard from plant-based diet uh, from plant-based YouTubers that keto was bad, keto is no good, don't do that. And you're thinking, well, why did Helen lose weight doing that? She was probably in a calorie deficit consistently, or very likely, or definitely. Uh, and I say very likely because there are a couple of exceptions, but. Yeah, she was very, very likely in, in a decent enough calorie deficit consistently to lose weight. That's why. Nothing magical about that particular approach. Nothing magical about plant-based diet. Okay, again, I can simultaneously argue that plant-based diet has changed my life and I do feel it's superior and that's why I do it today, okay, because I feel it's superior. But I'm very conscious of also analyzing, uh, reflecting on the fact that my journey over the last couple of years is a result of um, my constant, continued implementation of a respect of calories. Um, and I don't even track my calories, as you guys know, but it's having some calorie consciousness and some awareness and looking at the scale and thinking, well, maybe if the scale's not dropping, maybe I am over consuming. When I've still got 10 pounds to go and the scale's not dropping, maybe I am not eating too many calories. Maybe it isn't coming down to the amount of avocados in my diet or the amount of carbohydrates eating. It's just, it's just bottom line calories. Um, but I wanted to stress consistently right? There's no good being a Monday to Friday dieter, as we call them, and then going wild on the weekend. So that is, hey, Mathoni, nice to see you. That is, without a doubt, step number one. You need to be in a calorie deficit consistently. Many ways to peel an orange. What's personally changed my life is a whole foods plant-based diet. It's the easiest way I've discovered to actually maintain that calorie deficit consistently over the long term. Step number two, all your food consumption, all your eating, needs to be intentional, intentional. Less of this mindless nonsense where you're running to the vending machine at 3 p.m. because there's that lull in the afternoon. You're, you're at home, you're rushing to the fridge because you're stressed, your kids are stressing you out a bit. God, they won't stop and one kid needs this and one kid needs this and then the dog's barking in the corner and then you shoot into your fridge because I, I need something to medicate, to soothe, to quiet, to just give myself maybe a pick-me-up or a treat for the stressful day that I'm having. Um, and that is the, actually, I'm actually describing something that's a rather mindful thought process there, aren't I? But it is that sort of mindless 
a lack of purpose behind food decisions that really is adding calories and calories to most people's diets beyond what they actually need. There is a big difference between physical hunger, your body's genuine requirement for nutrients, for calories, aka energy, um, versus emotional hunger, which is I need something now to make me feel a bit better. I'm a bit sad. I'm feeling a bit lonely. I'm a little bit bored today. There's not much going on. Or on the adverse, I'm stressed. I'm just having an argument with my spouse, with my partner, with my boss at work. Get me in that fridge, man. Give me that cake right now, okay? And that is not, you know, I want to make a distinction here between, I'll leave the train of thought. I was just going to go on, but I want to make this distinction very, very clear. There is a difference between being hungry and having the desire to eat. Being physically genuinely hungry and having the desire to eat, they're not always the same. And people use that term, I'm hungry, with a lot of overlap, with a lot of generosity. It's like, are you actually hungry or do you just want to eat? They're not the same thing. They're not always, I should stress, the same thing. Hey, Patricia, nice to see you. Nice to have lots of my clients in here watching. Thanks for everyone that's joining me because this was kind of impromptu. Uh, I did want to do one today, but it's a very rush day. So, um, uh, so yeah, I didn't actually uh, let you guys know ahead of time at all that I was going to do this. I just sprung on and jump. I kind of shoot myself in the foot with this because if I announced it, it made a big deal. Hey, guys, I'm going to live on YouTube. Join me for your questions. Join me to talk about the three ways to lose up to um, 10 pounds in the next eight weeks. I'd have a lot more eyeballs if I actually did that sort of promotional work. So I sort of short shoot myself in the foot with these, but it's been a bit of a wild day. So anyway, back to our point here, all your eating needs to be intentional. You don't want to catch yourself eating needlessly, eating mindlessly when you're not actually hungry, just as a result of boredom, stress, or the feeling that you want a, re a reward, right? When you've just had dinner, do you really need that dessert that you want? Oh yeah, but I'm used to something sweet after dinner. Yeah, but do you really need it? Yeah, I, I really want it, Ryan. I grew up in, no, that's not what I'm asking. Do you really need need that chalky cake? Do you really need that bit of chocolate? Do you really need that ice cream after dinner? Literally 10 minutes after you just finished your dinner, come on, you can't actually be hungry already, right? But this is what people are doing. They've got all of these habits and all of these behavioral patterns based on time of day, based on their feelings, based on what's going on at home or what's going on at work or if they're out and about. And all of these associations and 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 connected habits, let's say, are in their brain. And it feels inevitable that they go through these cycles. And to the extent, like I say, that it's always mindless, they're stressed, and all of a sudden they're eating potato chips because it's so mind... I'm sure you've experienced this. It's so mindless because it's a behavior that you've trained and trained. And so you start tricking your brain into thinking that food is the response to a feeling or an emotion you've got without even knowing necessarily that you're doing that. So yeah, it's 3 p.m. There's a bit of a lull in your day, I know. But should you actually be eating? Are you actually hungry right now? I know you always watch movies movies with some snacks or some popcorn but do you actually need that food right now so if you want to lose 10 pounds in the next eight weeks you need to be thinking very consciously when you sit down to eat do i actually need this right now am i actually hungry okay is this necessary for me right now to eat and simply by taking this level of awareness and mindfulness throughout your daily life you'll be able to it's like my clients in the first week with me they're always like Ryan, oh my God, I didn't realize how many bad habits around food I had. It's only now I've come on the program, you've given me the structure, you've given me some rules and you're providing some accountability. And I'm kind of now shining a light back on my behavior. And I see all of these little voices and cravings in my head that I was obviously giving into a lot before, but I wasn't really analyzing because they were so mindless. They were happening in such a natural flow that I wasn't really paying that much attention to them. So this is what my clients are always telling me after sort of the first one to two weeks on the program. It's kind of actually a bit of a bitter pill to swallow. You're like, you kind of realize, oh, I'm actually a little bit more messed up with food than I even thought I was. I knew it was bad. But now because I'm forced into a structure and someone's holding me to account, I'm seeing... And then the sort of the mental and emotional coaching we do around food. I'm seeing all these behaviors now. I didn't realize it was this bad, okay? So it's a bittersweet feeling. It's nice to see where you've been going wrong in the past, but it's also kind of like, gee, I didn't know. I didn't know I was in that bad, you know, shape in terms of my food choices. But, you know, I have all of these voices and all of these cravings all the time. So ultimately... Bottom line, I'm trying to convince you and persuade you to eat when you're actually hungry here, which I know is a, a, an intuitive thing that takes some time to learn. It takes some time to understand your appetite and your metabolism, especially when you are used to, used to eating, excuse me, every time that you want to eat, right? If you're always training that response to, to 
a, the desire to food, that it's very hard to actually say to yourself, no, I'm actually only going to eat from now on when I'm actually hungry. Now, I like three square meals a day, and that's what works for my clients so incredibly well. And it sort of suits most people's, you know, metabolic rate and appetite, not metabolic rate, excuse me, but let's say metabolic requirements and, and, and sort of appetite, but also uh, at the intersection with their schedule very nicely as well. Three square meals a day, maybe one to two snacks. That is what's working really well for my clients. That's how I lost the weight initially on three uh, meals a, a day and one snack. That's how I lost my first 25 pounds after going plant-based, uh, after starting a plant-based diet in 2015. So that is the structure that I'm pretty you know, I, I've kind of propagandized myself into. I love that structure because it's changed my life so incredibly, but it allows me to really last four to five to six hours between each meal, feel really good because like I say, of the fiber content, because the volume I get to eat and because I'm eating these really sort of nutrient rich, nourishing foods. Uh, and that's been a very easy way to do it. And then in between nine times out of 10, if I get hungry in between a meal, sorry, I have one snack a day. Nowadays I have like two to three snacks a day, but when I lost weight, I had one snack a day. But what was my point? Yeah, if I get a bit hungry beyond the usual times that I have snacks and meals, nine times out of 10, maybe it's the one time out of 10 is when I've had a really active day or something like that. And my metabolism is just fine. But um, the, the nine times out of 10, if I get hungry between meal times and it isn't a designated snack a time I usually have, my snack that I've agreed that I will have that day. I know it's not actually hungry. It's something else. So watch out for that stuff. And I want to train, I want you to get yourself to train yourself. Makes no sense, but also simultaneously makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I think you follow. Um, train yourself to actually spot. Now, am I hungry? Ask yourself that question. And this new awareness will also better help you with step one, right? Which is going back to the importance of being in a calorie deficit consistently, like I shared right at the start here that's going to loop all back, right? If you can be more mindful in your decision making, it's going to be so much easier to be in a calorie deficit because you're going to eliminate the two, three, four, 500 extra calories a day that you have when you don't actually need them. You're not actually hungry and it's just a response to emotion. And finally here, step number three, before we wrap up, this is the final thing you need to do to make sure that you're losing very close, maybe even a little bit more, like my top clients are doing, like I just showed you right at the start on the infographics here on the screen, lose up to... 10 pounds in the next eight weeks. Like I say, a little bit more. This is this one is pretty crucial. It's not as crucial as the other two, but this is going to solidify it. You need to be tracking your progress. I was trying to think about ways to say this. But you need to be tracking your progress. If you are not seeing where you're actually at, what results you're getting as a result from the actions and the strategy and the plan that you're taking, how do you know what's working? How do you know when to troubleshoot? How do you know when you're in a plateau? How do you know if you're actually losing weight? You need to be checking these things consistently so you don't lose one, two, three weeks where you're not making any progress. And then all of a sudden, it's like, okay, I've got this 10 pound milestone. I've already lost three weeks. So now I've got five weeks to lose 10 pounds. And then things might start to get a little bit too aggressive and people start juice fasting because they're in such a rush and they're so impatient. All of this extreme nonsense, nothing wrong with juicing, but I think juicing alone as a diet, um, I don't like. So very unnecessary and highly restrictive. So yeah, if you want to be ensuring that you lose a good amount here in the next eight weeks, I would suggest that you want to start weighing yourself three times a week. And for ease, this isn't precisely what my clients do. They have a slightly different system. But for ease here and simplicity, Monday, Wednesday, Friday works quite nicely. That's three weigh-ins a week. That's enough data to see if you're actually making progress. So get up first thing in the morning before you've had any food, before you've had any water, preferably without clothes on. I know it's a small thing, but they do make a difference. You want to keep the parameters the same when you're stepping on the scale, right, for the sake of continuity. Jump on the scale. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, write that number down somewhere, note tap of your phone or some kind of fitness tracking software or MyFitnessPal or something like that. Um, just scribble it down in your journal, whatever it is, record that number and then you're actually tracking progress. Then you can actually see, okay, every week, am I losing weight? If I'm not losing weight, why not? What do I need to change? If I'm gaining weight, oh my goodness, red flags. What do I need to change? There's something that I'm clearly doing very, very wrong here. Perhaps you're losing too much weight. Perhaps as somebody that only has the last... 10 pounds to go, you're losing two or three pounds a week, which for someone that just has a little bit of weight to lose, 
in my mind, as a coach, that kind of a little bit of a red flag that they might be doing it slightly too aggressively. And, and that's not going to be all that sustainable to lose that quickly. So the data from the scales is informing you on how effective your strategy is. So this is the unglamorous run, right? Step number one, we talked about calories. Step number two, calorie deficit. Step number two, we talked about the emotional eating, the mindless stuff. This is the obvious stuff that is going to be helpful to you guys, I'm sure. This third one, it isn't as sexy. It isn't as glamorous, right? It doesn't feel as cool, me just saying, Make sure you weigh yourself, track your progress. It's kind of, oh, it's a bit nerdy, obvious thing to say, right? It's like, well, yeah, that's obvious, right? But people don't do this. People don't do this. They go to the gym and they use their scales there on a Friday night after a bunch of food, after a workout. And then the next time they weigh in is six days later on their own scales at 6 a.m. in the morning. And it's all over the place. And they miss weigh-ins or they're scared to weigh in because they're, they don't want to own up to the fact they had chocolate cake a couple of times this week, right? That's the other thing as well. Weighing yourself regularly holds you to account. It gives you a reason to be better because it's like, oh, no, I've got a weigh-in tomorrow. I'm not going to mess up today. Um, and so it drives, I think, another level of performance in people when they know they've got these set weigh-ins. That's why it's really cool with my clients because my clients, this is how, how cool is this? Well, maybe scary, but I think from a coach's perspective, it's really cool. I can see their weight trackers. So we set up a weight tracker on a Google spreadsheet Every time they update their weight, I can see it. So, And they know that. So they know that I'm looking all the time. They can't hide their weight tracker from me. They can run away and block me, you know, and never speak to me again. I hope they don't do that. But, you know, they can't hide from me. I see the numbers going in there. So that drives another level of performance in people. Okay, Ryan's looking at my numbers. I better make sure I have a really good week this week. Not just for my sake, but also because I don't want that guy uh, on my case, that harsh guy on my case, right? No, I'm lovely, really. Don't worry about it. I'm lovely, really. I'm not too, I'm pretty stubborn, but I'm not too harsh. I'm not too mean, uh, I would like to think. So yeah, weigh yourself Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I would say as a rule of thumb, and I want to stress rule of thumb, this is general advice. There are exceptions to this, but as a rule of thumb, as long as you're in the one to two pounds per week ballpark, you'll hit your target. You'll hit that target 10 pounds in the next eight weeks, as long as you're in the one to two range. If you do hit a plateau, though, over a couple of weeks, how do you know you're in a plateau? Uh, it's about two weeks, 10 to 14 days where you've not made any significant progress on the scale. You can sort of, uh, and, and you've been consistent. That's the caveat, right? If you've been eating loads of things, you say, I'm in a plateau, right? And I'm like, well, you're not in a plateau. You're not in a plateau. You've just been eating crap. <laughs> so your weight's gone standstill. A plateau is when your plan followed consistently no longer works. You've had 10 to 14 days. You've been really consistent, following a structured approach, day in, day out. You don't seem to be losing weight. That's when you've got a couple of options. Number one, you could either add about 2,500 steps to your daily activity level. So an extra 2,500 steps. Number two, you could reduce your daily diet by approximately 80 calories, by approximately 80 calories. Now, again, general rules of thumb. Some of you might try this and it won't work. The 2,500 calories won't be enough. The 80 calories won't be enough to get you through the plateau. Or actually, maybe you could get through the plateau with just a, a 60 calorie reduction, not the 80 calories. Maybe you could get through the plateau on 2,000 steps a day extra instead of 2,500. So Again, this is general because I know there's going to be, I don't know, 500 to 1,000 people ultimately that watch this live stream. So it needs to be general advice from me here. You're not working with me. So all due respect, you're not going to get a level of specification, a level of customization from me to you as an individual when I'm speaking to 500 to 1,000 people, right? But that will break you through your plateau. Um, and all of these three things combined, you should start losing weight again. Follow these steps. You should start losing weight again. Monitor those next weigh-ins very closely. Those next couple of weigh-ins make very closely closely to make sure you start losing weight. And then you can enjoy this process. When you start getting results, it's really fun. I know a lot of people are really scared of this process, scared of trying to lose weight. They've had a lot of failures in the past um, uh, or whatever they tried last time. Maybe they did start losing weight, but then they rebounded up again. And that's kind of given them this sort of sense of, well, I'm kind of doomed here. It's inevitable that I'll go back up the scale. I just, there's no easy antidote to those limiting beliefs. I talk about limiting beliefs a lot with my clients. There's I could counter each one of those for about an hour but and try and give you some new sort of perspectives on them. But really, ultimately, the thing that's going to destroy those limiting beliefs is you getting results and you breaking your old bad patterns. Uh, if you were always someone that gives up at the two-week mark, there's nothing really that's going to make you feel good and confident that you can do that until you actually do that, until you break the two-week mark. And then you go three, oh, I've been five, six, seven weeks. I've been two months consistent now. That It gets destroyed. That idea that you can't get past the two weeks, it gets destroyed as you start going through it. Not from a little pep talk from me here, but I do want to remind you that 
when those good weigh-ins start coming in, when you start seeing after one to two weeks, if you get this right, one to two weeks, when you start seeing the dividends, when you start seeing the results pay off in the mirror and on the scale, this is a really fun, exciting, life-changing process. It is hard to change habits, but the actual process of losing weight is really simple. To recap, calorie deficit consistently. We here, the reason why you watch me is because you like a plant-based diet. So I suggest do it with a plant-based diet. Obviously, that's what's changed my life. But ultimately, you need to be in a calorie deficit consistently. Number two, eliminate the mindless and emotional eating and ask yourself, am I actually hungry right now? And that's going to allow you much easier to get into step one, to do step one and maintain that um, sensible calorie deficit because you're eliminating all the times when you didn't actually really need food, but you're just a little bit bored or stressed or had an argument or a bit sad or lonely that day. And then finally, number three, track your progress. This is a bow on top of the present, on top of the package. Track your progress to make sure steps one and two are actually leading to results and you'll be good and you'll set yourself up to get close, I should think, to that 10 pounds mark in the next eight weeks or so. So hopefully all this free information helped. But if you do want me to personally walk you step by step through this process, on my Slim and Sustain program, you can head to veganslimandsustain.com. I'll give you the clarity, the structure, the plan, the accountability. That's the big one that you're missing right now to help you actually stay consistent this time to make sure that every meal and every day is valuable from a weight loss perspective. So you're not wasting weeks and months thinking or hoping that you're losing weight, trying to just pull information from YouTube videos and books, which are useful. I don't want to sound condescending. This was a YouTube video, but to actually have it personal for you to guarantee that what you're eating, how you're moving your body every day is actually going to produce results. Oh, you can just relax the peace of mind that comes with that. You don't have to worry about, oh, will this meal work for weight loss? You can just think, no, Ryan's designed this exactly for me. I know it's going to work. And you can just relax into this process and get the results like I showed at the start. Once more, let me see if I can flash some of these up just as a reminder of how well lots of my clients are doing right well and how the advice I've shared today is not just willy-nilly stuff. These are direct lessons that I've learned after helping not only through my own journey, but helping now nearly 400 vegans and plant-based dieters through my Slim and Sustain program towards an ideal healthy body weight. So this is Pat, who lost 17 pounds, once again, at 71 years old. Incredible. This is another client, client X, we shall call her, lost again, funnily enough, 17 or so pounds, uh, this time in 12 weeks with me. Uh, this is Vicky crushed it, smashed it. She did 24 weeks with me, admittedly. This is a bit probably slightly slower, isn't it? A rate slower than the rate of 10 pounds in eight weeks, but close enough to still be really noteworthy. And you can see what a change in her physique there. Incredible. This is Ryan that worked with me a couple of years ago, 31 pounds lost in 12 weeks. This stuff works. So hopefully the free advice helps. But if you do want that next level of information, next level of support from me to just guarantee that you have an amazing end to the year here, we got off to a flying start next year um, and you're actually seeing the results you want in terms of weight loss, in terms of building healthy habits for life, getting fit, importantly, improving relationship with food as well, which is something I'm hearing more and more from you guys that you're really struggling with, the emotional eating, the cravings, the binging, self-sabotage. This is a huge focus on my program. So if all of that resonates, I am the guy for you. Head to veganswomensustain.com. It's linked down below. I must go. I've got to go. I've got martial arts very soon. So, and I know the traffic's going to be bad. So I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for your time. More live streams coming. I promise you that. And regular YouTube videos again very soon. Thanks for your time. See you soon. Take care.